Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Scotty Sykes with Sykes and Company. I have with me today uh, Kathy Blanchard, also with Sykes and Company, and Nicolette Matthew with Atrium 24. And today we're going to be talking about COVID testing in your pharmacy and how that increases cash flow. And I know Nicolette's going to go into a lot more than just COVID testing as well. Um, but we're delighted to have her uh, join us today for this Master of the Margin series. If you have questions or anything, uh, feel free to throw that into the chat box at any time, and we'll be happy to address those as well. Uh, with that, let me introduce Nicolette with Atrium 24 and Palm Harbor Pharmacy. Nicolette. Thank you, Scotty. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, glad to be here today. I was putting these um, slides together, and man, we could... We could talk for days about this topic, right? It's It's been a really long year, two years, seven years, whatever it feels like. Um, but exactly, we're going to talk about increasing your cash flow with COVID testing um, and more. If you want to advance, you guys can see my Halloween costume since that's coming up this weekend. Um, you got the screen? You do. Can't see it? Mm -mm. Well, let me make I sure I got the right screen. Let me make sure I got the right screen here, guys. Hold on. There we go. Okay. A little bit of background. So um, there we go. So Atrium 24 is a, a consulting firm. Um, I really enjoy, I've been consulting with independent pharmacy owners uh, probably for the past nine years or so and I really enjoy learning from everyone and um, bouncing everything off of everybody and once one of us creates something all the rest of us jump in and make it better so atrium means constant heart uh, atrium 24 there's 24 hours in a day uh, your atrium being part of your heart and also the central focal point of a building kind of a gathering area so it's very transparent and it's constant uh, we have a data share program that we we kind of do deep dive analytics and uh, a lot of prescriber marketing we do. And all this makes sense when you talk about COVID because it's one thing to have the tests or have your CLIA waiver, um, but you really have to make sure that your, your COVID programs are full circle. You have to market them. You have to tell them about um, direct to consumer marketing, prescriber marketing, workflow in your pharmacy. So we custom brand a lot of stuff for our pharmacies as well. And um, I, put, I put a bunch of information in this webinar. So Let's go ahead and dive in. Um, this is what I hear all the time. Pharmacies were busier than ever. Margins continue to shrink. Um, what do we do? How do we combat these declining reimbursements? Um, the game is just kind of stacked against us. So what we're all collectively trying to do is carving out a profitable place for your pharmacy with your payers, your patients, your passions. So we pull a lot of dispensing data actually from um, hundreds of pharmacies around the country. I think we're up to like 30 states now. Um, and it helps guide our clinical programming uh, to give all of us a chance at profitability and a sound message to deliver to our local prescribers. And it's different for every pharmacy. Um, so on the next slide, I have a picture of our, our pharmacy, Palm Harbor Pharmacy. Um, if you wanna look us up, we, we spend a ton of time and effort and money on um, our online presence with Palm Harbor Pharmacy. And I'll show you um, a bunch of stuff that we use that has made our, our vaccine program and our testing program and our monoclonal antibody uh, program really um, make an impact and help with our cash flow in our own pharmacy. So on the next slide for the agenda, today uh, we'll talk about COVID testing, of course. Uh, we'll show you uh, just a little sneak peek of what we're doing with monoclonal antibodies because we just started at our pharmacy a few weeks ago. Um, COVID vaccines, that's getting even crazier. Uh, we'll touch on supplements and then um, something really cool to show you about reviews for your pharmacy. So with the COVID testing, um, CLIA waiver. So a lot of pharmacies that we talk with uh, still don't have a CLIA waiver. I know there was a big push for pharmacies and HHS and CMS and all that to approve CLIA waivers very quickly last year. They're still approving them pretty quickly, but we have a, a poll question. I'd like to know if you have a CLIA waiver currently. And I know it's different in every state, um, but we'll show you a couple links. And matter of fact, um, 
there's some call to actions throughout this presentation where if you uh, self-register in our atrium portal then you'll kind of ha have access to communicate with us um, really anybody who asks us for help with a clia waiver will help um, we we've filled out uh, you know our own in great detail we we add the test so i'll show you a couple things here um, about the clia waiver itself and nicolette cut you off here we've got 70 percent of folks have voted and 76 percent say yes they have a clia waiver oh good that's perfect so i won't spend too much time on the next two slides uh, but i just wanted to put it in here uh, for completion's sake And then we got a question here. Palm Harbor Pharmacy looks so good. Who helped you put your pharmacy together? That's oh, Diego. Um, the fixtures and everything, Travis Bailey with Advanced Designs. Um, our our pharmacy space itself is kind of unique. It's like a triangular space. And so I had four different designers try to work it up. And um, we went with Travis. Um, and matter of fact, I, I was just in contact with him last week to add some more things to the pharmacy and do all this and uh, apparently logier and all that and all the fixtures they're on a huge back order right now like a 36 week back order or something in a huge surcharge so wow wow yeah it's always something just the days get weirder as covid the, continues the, to go the on nature of the the world today right yeah but but we really love working with travis i know he does joe moose's stores he does amina's stores i believe as well um he's he's done Kuntal's store so travis is great and his team looks wonderful yeah thank you we really like it we're proud of it we moved into our pharmacy actually we, we were at a different location in kind of a medical strip mall and we moved to this one which is just a mile down the road but it's on the main highway and it has a drive-through and it's about three thousand square feet um and we moved in in february of 2020 so a couple of weeks later, we had to close the lobby um, for COVID, but luckily we had a drive-through and we had social media. So we were doing a ton of live videos, Facebook videos, and um, we got a ton of traction just in the early days of COVID and we, we really kind of haven't stopped. Um, so then the next couple slides, okay, so COVID testing, this is good. So with this, um, We'll talk about the types of tests um, and then we'll get into each of these details because as you guys know a lot of this matters and I didn't want to um, only talk you know with people who haven't started COVID testing yet um, and the demand for COVID testing right now today's date is down but I, I do think it's going to increase so luckily for our pharmacy and for Atrium, because we also sell COVID tests at Atrium, we buy them in bulk and then sell them to our, our fellow pharmacy owners. Um, we were ready for this Delta variant. So we had all these processes in place. And then all of a sudden, um, just like a sack of bricks, one day, it was a rainy morning, just kind of like it is right now here in Florida. All of a sudden, um, people got sick with Delta. Mm -hmm and all of our bookings just went off the charts and um, we had multiple pharmacists testing patients at the same time we test outside in our parking lot and it, it was it was insane with delta and we were just running as fast as we could and sweating processing all these covid tests for sick patients it was terrible um some of my staff even was out um and monetarily the pharmacy and atrium did really well during the delta variant because we were ready so that was something that i wanted i want to show you everything that we do and how we do it in my pharmacy um and i think we should all be ready even if nothing else if a, another variant doesn't come i mean we all hope another variant does not come uh, but still the holidays and travel and even cold and flu season and patients um, having symptoms, they're gonna need to rule COVID out. They're gonna need to exclude COVID because it's still a thing. So we definitely need to be ready. Um, so if we advance, these are the just a couple slides. So I can email these links to you if you want. If you register in the Atrium portal, we'll send it to you. That's just the CLIA waiver application for those of you who don't have a CLIA waiver. Um, it's like a 10 page PDF that you have to fill out. And then once it's completed, you send that form to a certain um, place that is state specific for you. And so we have the state list as well. 
And on the next slide, um, this is the part that takes a lot of time for people and it trips them up because when you're applying for the CLIA waiver, you have to put which tests you're going to perform. Um, it's really best to be as specific as possible and just put in all the point of care tests that, that you may perform. Um, and this is the level of detail that you have to put. So the collection method, um, what it's testing for, the device and who it's manufactured by. So these are the three tests that we use in my pharmacy. And these are also the three tests um, that we buy in bulk and we, we sell to other pharmacies around the country through Atrium. So we can send you this information. If you already have a CLIA waiver and you don't have these tests on your waiver, you'll need to amend your CLIA waiver. Um, and that's really simple. It's just a, a simple form that you send in and just amend to add these tests to your current CLIA. So something to keep in mind, we've all gotten really good at point of care testing and we wanna do more, right? So as you're bringing in new machines and new tests, maybe you're going to bring in a cholesterol tech to start doing cholesterol checks, maybe an INR machine, maybe you're going to start testing for vitamin D. Just always um, have as part of your workflow and process on bringing on new tests and new machines to update and amend your CLIA waiver. So the types of COVID tests, it really breaks down into antigen and antibody. And um, everybody on our team is really good, even our 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 young clerk downstairs at answering all the questions that come in on the phone, right? From patients, which tests do I need? I'm going on a cruise. I'm going to Egypt. Um, I feel sick. I was exposed. When were you exposed? So you'll, you'll have a ton of different questions and a ton of different scenarios that you have to work through with the patients when they call. But antigen tests look for the virus itself. Um, and there's uh, rapid antigen and rapid PCR. Um, back in the day, we were sending off PCR tests and it was taking days and it was really stressful if you had a window of time for a patient's flight and you had to get the result back. So the rapid PCR is awesome and I'll show that to you. Uh, and then the antibody tests, those look for past infection and or those can, they can see an IgG uh, on a patient who's been vaccinated. So that's something the patient can do. All the tests that we do are self-pay in our pharmacy. We don't bill insurance for them. Um, some clients that I work with do bill insurance or they've tried to bill on the medical side through EBS or um, FDS or even through, uh, what is it, mobile MediClaim. So far what we're seeing is that the reimbursements kind of barely cover the test themselves. So I know everyone's area is different, right? We talked about everybody's pharmacy and everyone's clientele being different. Um, so a lot of pharmacies are like, well, I, you know, I can't charge what you charge in Palm Harbor, Nicolette, cash pay, uh, the urgent care is giving them for free, or there's government sites giving them for free. We always call around to our urgent care facilities to find out what they're charging. Um, but you want that, that market who they want the test right now. They don't want to be exposed. They don't want to be in like a dirty, rushed environment. Um, they want results right now and they just want a great experience. They don't want to wait for hours in a line. They don't want to wait for days for a result to come back. Right. Um, I've even had patients like they go to CVS and they only have a limited number of bookings per day because they're not staffed for it. And um, they, they have to wait days for the result and then the test comes back inconclusive. Whereas, I mean, you can buy an antigen test for like, I don't know, $10, $12 a pop right now. You could charge $20, you could charge 30. We charge 99 for a rapid antigen, but uh, all to say, there's still room for you to offer testing and, and to have somewhat of a margin, uh, even if maybe, you know, the environment that your store's in is not ideal for, for cash clinical programs, if that makes sense. And the antigen, Nicolette, is, is if you're feeling sick, you're, you know, it's going to tell you if you're uh, COVID or not, but the PCC, PCC, PCR, sorry, is more along the lines if uh, you're not feeling sick, but you're not sure if you, you know, maybe you've been exposed. Is that right? Is that how that? Yeah, that the PCR there? is kind of the, the gold standard test. It's the most sensitive. So, and we've, we've done so many thousands of tests now, we've tested uh, rapid antigen and rapid PCR on the same patient to see what's going on. The PCR will pick up 
an infection sooner than the rapid antigen will. It's more sensitive um, and it's more specific as well. And, uh, so and it, is one of these specific to travel? Sometimes it depends on your destination. And that's okay. what we always tell patients. And a lot of times we'll have patients who aren't very computer savvy and we'll look it up for them. So we're constantly looking up embassies of different countries and things like this. But it just depends on the verbiage of where that patient's traveling to or the cruise line or whatever it is, what type of test they'll accept. Okay. So if they'll only accept a molecular test or an RT-PCR, that's the rapid PCR test. Um, if they'll accept any kind of antigen test at all, then just the kind of the cheaper, quicker rapid antigen is fine. Uh, we've been testing a lot of uh, patients here in Tampa going on cruises. And so it seems like right now all the cruise lines are allowing the rapid antigen test, which is nice because we charge $99, whereas the rapid PCR, we charge $199. So I'll show you some, I have some like snips from our website if we advance. So this is, if you want to see the tests that we have and the, the prices and everything for Atrium, you can go to app.atrium24.net. And if you already have an account, you can just log in, of course, and click on A24 store. Um, if you don't, you can self-register and it'll just ask you all your, your NPI and your information about your pharmacy because we vet everyone that, that gets into our portal. But we have a ton of freebies in there and freebie videos and resources that we upload constantly. Um, but that's where you'll see the three different tests that we have and the pricing. Um, and if, I mean, our pricing's really good. We buy them in bulk and then we just sell them to pharmacies. We don't mark up hardly at all. Uh, but if you're getting better pricing though, let me know because we can always kind of use that information the next time we place a bulk order to get the prices down for us and for everyone else. So uh, this is from our website. So, and if feel free uh, to click around on our website, palmharborpharmacy.com. And if you click on COVID testing, this is kind of the snip about the rapid antigen test. And this, so this is patient facing. We typically use the rapid antigen test. If you're sick with symptoms um, or if you've been exposed, the, you know, the fine print, it's best to wait at least four or more days from the time you were exposed. Um, what we see in the literature is anywhere from two to five days from exposure is when a rapid antigen test can likely pick up the infection. Um, but remember, even your clerks who are answering the phones need to know if a patient calls and says, oh my gosh, I was just exposed. I need to come in for a test right now. It's too soon. The test won't pick it up. So you have to kind of counsel that patient through and ask them a lot of questions. And so it is a little labor intensive. Um, for us, um, we have a link to You Can Book Me. That's where we do all of our online bookings but we let the patient know the test is performed out front in your car. We process it on site. Your results complete in 15 minutes. The care start takes 10 minutes for the read, but we just give us our, ourselves a little, little time. Uh, the cost is $99. Uh, we tell patients you may submit to your insurance company to attempt reimbursement as your invoice will contain all the billing codes and information that you need. Um, but we always use that verbiage that will give you the paperwork and the CPT codes to attempt reimbursement, but we don't make any kind of promises. And we tell the patient, I don't know if your insurance will reimburse this. Um, we're a pharmacy, so we can bill for prescriptions and this is a diagnostic test. So, and sometimes patients get mad. Um, they want a free test. Like why aren't your tests free? Uh, we got one negative review out of our 700 and something where it said that we were a ripoff. And of course I had to respond and say, all of our pricing is online on the website. Um, we hope you can find a free government run site, but we're a private entity and we, you know, nothing is provided to us from the government for testing. So we have to purchase everything, all the tests and all the PPE and all the staff. So um, we're pretty upfront about it and we get pretty good business from it. Um, but it just tells patients it's a one inch nasal swab. So it's not, it's not that bad. Um, we go on both sides of the nose and just pretty much when the nose starts to narrow. Um, that's pretty much it on this one. We do say cons not accepted by some foreign countries. Check with your destination. Um, I know the HSA, uh, HSA accounts will also cover the cost of uh, testing as well. Yeah, we, we bill through one of the booking questions when a patient's booking an appointment, it asks if they're gonna use an HSA or an FSA card. 
um, because it's funny, we use Pioneer and in Pioneer, we just, we kind of bill it as like an OTC item, a rapid antigen test, antibody test, PCR test. But if it's an HSA, we actually run it through as a prescription um, so that it'll cover yeah. when we rank up on the register. Uh, otherwise, we don't we don't run these tests through as prescriptions because when we were doing, I don't know, 60 to 100 tests a day, uh, and especially first thing in the morning, right? That's when patients want to get tested because they book all night long to come in as soon as we open, and we just we didn't have the time or capacity to enter all these new patients in and enter all the scripts for the testing, and um, so we just have a button actually on the point of sale for each test. Um, and this this rapid antigen COVID testing, we do have an e-course uh, that has all this stuff that I'm about to show you and more. Um, and that's also in our A24 store, but we have videos of, of our pharmacists performing the test and everything. Pretty sure I'm getting a COVID test or two myself in these videos with a swab way up my nose, but haven't we all done that by now? <laughs> um, and this is the Care Start. That's the one we use. Um, you're probably all mostly familiar with Care Starts. Those ones don't require any kind of uh, machine or dock or anything. It's just a visual read. So it's a cassette and it's a little test tube with liquid and it's a nasal swab and that's really all there is to it. Um, when we started doing the COVID tests, we were using the BD Veritor for rapid antigen, um, but the care starts were much, much more cost effective. And um, I mean, we're, we're able just to line up like 20 tests at a time. So if any of you are starting to do um, employer tests or tests at schools or anything, the care starts are really good antigen test just to tell you very quickly if someone has COVID right now. And then the next slide is, a, this is just a, a screenshot of our form. So every patient that, that goes to our website and books a COVID test, they enter all the intake information. And I know a lot of people use um, Jot Form and maybe even Acuity, but we use You Can Book Me, and that's what it is, youcanbookme.com. Uh, we've just gotten really good at it, and it works in our workflow. So the patient answers all the questions that we built and you can book me for each testing type. And then um, we, use, uh, we use Zapier a lot to automate tasks. So the information from the booking zaps into these fillable PDFs that we've made in PDF filler. And so, and then what happens is every morning, let's say, my team can just go into PDF filler and print out all the completed PDFs for that day's testing. And it'll have the service on the top right, what time the patient's appointment is, what vehicle they'll be arriving in, because remember, they're going to pull up out front. Um, and the instructions, the patient gets a lot of um, email confirmations and text reminders and instructions, and it tells them uh, when it's time for your test, pull up out front of the pharmacy and call us and tell us that you've arrived. And we have all these tests printed out and put in order by the point of sale. So when a patient calls, we tell them, let me grab your paperwork and make sure I have all the information I need. And we'll even look out front to make sure they're actually out front of the pharmacy because patients have parked like down the street and called us and told us to come out. So uh, once they're there, we have their paperwork. At that time, my team checks them out on the point of sale um, and then puts the receipt in there and checks off that it was paid and puts their initials and all that. And then um, the pharmacist grabs the stack of paperwork and goes into the testing room. That's kind of our, our workflow. Um, and on the next slide is the actual patient invoice for the antigen test. Um, and you'll notice that we're, we're very color coded. Uh, the antigen is green. I think the PCR is red and the antibody is blue. And we do the same thing with our vaccines. So we keep color coding throughout the pharmacy. Um, just so you don't want to perform the wrong test on the wrong patient. You don't want to mix up the paperwork. You certainly don't want to give the wrong vaccine to a patient. So color coding is really important. Um, but this is just an example of um, the invoice, and it has ICD-10 codes and CPT codes on there, too. We auto-populate all the tests with a negative. Um, most patients are negative, which is good. And then, uh, although with Delta, oh my gosh, so every time a test is looking like it's going to be positive, because you can see it on the visual reader, especially if the patient's very symptomatic, um, then we have the pharmacy team change it to a positive. Um, but all this gets auto filled out from the booking with the patient's name and date of birth. Uh, so, so when somebody in the peak of Delta, for example, you had maybe a hundred 
people sign up for testing at night, you come in the next morning and you, you're you just printing out all that information they've already keyed in there and then you're just waiting for them to come? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, and that's uh, awesome. That workflow I is remember, awesome. I didn't, I didn't know anything about Zapier and we had to sign a BAA with Google and all this because it's going through Google Sheets and things like this, but um, I hadn't used Zapier, but uh, when COVID first started and we first started testing, we were manually typing in yeah. oh, all wow. the bookings to all these paperwork because you had to have workflow forms, you had to have invoice sheets. Um, so it, I remember I was up till like 3.30 in the morning and I'm too old for that anymore. <laughs> but I was up till 3.30 trying to figure out how to zap because anytime in the pharmacy you're doing any manual data entry or manual, there's a better way. So we figured it out and had every, we have everything zap into the proper forms now, um, which is nice. And everybody's so spoiled if PDF filler goes down or Zapier goes down for maintenance and they have to type into anything, even if it's just a few tests, they're like, oh, fix it, Nicolette. Like, this is the worst. <laughs> well. It'll spoil you, that's for sure. Yeah. But it's it like works. We have a couple of questions here, Nicolette, before we, sure. um, if entered, if, if you're entering it as a prescription, does it have to be authorized by a physician? No, it doesn't. Um, with everything that HHS has been uh, passing in the PrEP Act and all these things, pharmacists are authorized to uh, prescribe quote unquote COVID testing and monoclonal antibody treatments. So we just put ourselves as the as the prescriber and pioneer, myself or our other pharmacist, Rebecca. So this is a snippet. Um, I was going to tell you too, manual entry can lead to errors, human error, right? And we're always very conscious of that. There's a few pieces in our workflow, um, such as like the, the results. If a patient leaves and we have to email them results and they give us the authorization to put their results in an email, you could always attach the wrong file uh, and send the wrong patient report. Um, there's any anytime something's manual, I'm nervous. And anytime there's room for error, like with the vaccines, I'm terrified. There was a, a Walgreens pharmacist in the news recently that gave a family of four Pfizer COVID vaccines and they were supposed to give them flu shots. And one was a five-year-old kid and a four-year-old kid. And they received a full adult dose of Pfizer COVID vaccine. And I think that the, the kids might have some cardiomyopathy. Um, I don't know if that was just a scare tactic in the news or if it actually happened, but regardless, it's terrifying because we're all so busy. We're only adding services to our pharmacies. We're not taking any services away. Um, granted, we're probably not as, as crazy as the chains are. I used to work for Walgreens for a long time and they have no help and it's just a mess, but still manual entry and more and more services that are new. It's kind of a recipe for disaster when you think of errors. So I know we're trying to increase cash flow and do all these cool things, but at the same time, we all have to like look at the system and the workflow to make sure that that we're not going to hurt anybody um, or have a huge HIPAA data breach. So PCR testing, this is a snippet from our website too. Uh, we had to market this one pretty heavily because just because we had the Acula machine in the pharmacy and we did rapid PCRs, no one's going to know unless we tell them. Um, so we we do a ton of social media posts um, and we were doing Facebook lives and all this. We call travel agencies to tell them we have a rapid PCR machine. Um, we were calling a lot of the businesses and the schools. Some schools were only letting kids come back to school after they were sick or exposed if they had a PCR test because they wanted it to be more accurate, especially some of the private schools in the area. Um, so PCR test. What's important here, $199, so it's expensive. Um, right now, the Acula cassette, I think we, we have it down to between $60 and $70, which is a, it's a pretty good price. Um, the price is fluctuating a little on that. Um, I've seen pharmacies charge for a PCR anywhere from $129 to like $229. To the patient if that makes sense so it kind of just depends on your area if you're a big area for travel or right by an airport or something like that um, but this is the gold standard test 
um, we have some patients who just they want to know and they want to pay and they just want the most sensitive test i think we have one client that's in a very wealthy area having about four hundred dollars a test here oh wow yeah yeah <laughs> and they're paying it left and right yeah well i mean yeah it definitely depends on your market yep um the next slide i think is an image that i have of the so this is the acula test We've, I think we've done over a thousand of these now. I'll have to get an updated count because we're just about to place another bulk order today, actually. But the Acula machine, um, it comes with a dock and there are testing cassettes. So um, with us, for example, we if you are just getting started, you have to buy one dock and then one box of 25 tests. Um, it's expensive. Like I said, well, the dock is like $350. I just got nervous. I thought I was in a CE. <laughs> I was like, you can't say numbers, Nicolette. No, we're going to say whatever we want. That's right. <laughs> and the tests are, um, I want to say they're like 70. We run coupon codes sometimes too. So let me know if you want one of those. But the Acula is very finicky. And a lot of pharmacists get upset if one of the, one of the docs or one of the cassettes rather errors out. But we have to remember that this is a diagnostic tool and you also have to use some judgment with this. So you have to look at patient symptoms and things because you might be testing a patient and the acula is so sensitive that they're gonna, let's say they had COVID, they've recovered, they feel better and they wanna go back to work. Well, if their work requires a PCR, some patients will test positive for like a month yeah. afterward and the acula is gonna pick it up. So, and you might run a care start on them and that's negative. So, uh, and the line for the positive might be so faint on this acula because you do put it in the dock, but then you take it out to visually interpret it. Um, so there is some, you know, some clinical judgment. The diagnostic tool is one thing to tell you whether the patient is black and white, positive or negative, but also symptoms and history and um, just what's going on with the patient is important too. So the next slide, this is a this is probably my favorite little little thing we made in Canva. I downloaded a bunch of stuff from our Canva account. Um, probably quite a few of you use Canva. If you ever need to make an image or brand it with your pharmacy logo or anything, Canva's awesome. Actually, uh, Michael, our digital operations coordinator, who's over here, is probably going to make be making an e-course soon on um, just social media and using Canva for your pharmacy because you can load all your brand kit and all your logos and you can make some really quick, easy, cool posts. So we did a huge breaking news. Um, we have a rapid PCR machine. We actually had the news come out to cover a story on it. So definitely if you're trying to ramp up or anytime you add a new product or service into your pharmacy, you should call the news. And if you don't know a few news anchors in your area, you should. So um, I have a few saved in my phone and if we start, um, and you know, they've reached out to me over the course of all this COVID to do some stories. And, and you know, we, we always say yes. Although I said no recently when they wanted to ask me about pediatric COVID vaccines, because <laughs> we're just not ready and I don't want to be feeding the news and get more phone calls from, <laughs> from patients right now. Um, but if you're bringing in a new machine or if you're going to start doing monoclonal antibodies or really anything new, you should reach out to the news and see if they want to do a story because they're they have to do stories every day right you might not run your story today but they might run it next week or at least you should stay top of mind with them what about social media are you are you making a, a an impression there as well yeah um we've we've gained a ton of new uh followers on social media facebook and everything throughout this pandemic. Um, some of our Facebook Lives that we have done have gotten like 10,000 views. Um, probably, and we don't pay, we don't boost anything. I think a lot of us have gone, gotten thrown in Facebook jail too for like boosting COVID posts, right? Um, so we just, we post it all, but the, the thing that helps our social media be so successful is there are local groups in our area like the palm harbor happenings group or um the hub is a group up in trinity a little bit north and different uh groups facebook groups will allow you to post as a business on different days of the week so like palm harbor happenings is mondays 
the hub is Mondays and Wednesdays. There's all these moms groups, the Dunedin moms group, the Palm Harbor moms group, the Tarpon Springs moms group. Um, so we belong as an individual, like on my Facebook account and on Michael's Facebook account, we belong to all these different groups. And then we created a marketing calendar just in Google, because we use Google calendars and drive and email. Um, we created a marketing calendar and we put events that repeat every week, if that makes sense, to remind us to post in those groups on those days of the week. So we'll take a, a post that performed pretty well on the Palm Harbor Pharmacy page. And every Monday, we'll take one of those posts and share it into the group, into the local group. And we'll put, you know, just some sort of uh, text and then always a call to action, always like a link, like book your test here or, you know, click here for more information if we have a landing page about it or something. And um, that has really gotten our name out. Um, and now if in those groups, other people ask about COVID testing or whatever it is, uh, other people who we don't even know will recommend Palm Harbor Pharmacy in there or they'll tag us in it so we get notified so we can pop on Facebook and answer questions. So that's a really good free way to let your local community know through Facebook um, in local groups that you're offering these services. Yeah, that social media can be powerful. We're getting, uh, this will be recorded. So we're getting a lot of questions on that. This will be recorded and it's gonna be pushed out to the attendees. Um, it looks like, how do you run it as a script? And a doctor, question mark. So uh, yeah, okay, she already answered that. Um, we're getting some questions, Nicolette, on the pricing. Um, mm -hmm. How do you normally charge? How do you determine how to charge for these tests? Our antibody tests, so what we charge patients antibody, we're at 79. Rapid antigen, we're at 99, and rapid PCR, we're at 199. Uh, we have not come off that. So I've thought about lowering it. I was going to lower it 20% or 30%, but I haven't because every time we call the local urgent cares around us, um, our prices are good. And I, I think I don't I don't think that COVID testing is a, like a race to the bottom type pricing service. Um, like I said, we have over 700 five-star reviews at our pharmacy. If you Google testing or anything near me, we show up first. Um, it's more of when someone needs it, they need it, and they're going to pay. So we've kind of held strong on our on our pricing. I'm kicking around lowering the price, but I haven't had to yet. But that, that's what I would do. Um, just kind of see what's, what, you know, if you were a patient and you needed a PCR test to travel to Europe, where would you go? So call places around you, find out what they're charging, see what the options are, and just make sure that you're competitive. And uh, the pricing that Nicolette's doing is $99 uh, antigen, rapid antigen, 9, 199 for the rapid PCR. That was a question. Yep. All right. So this is the PCR workflow form. Um, and then the next one's the PCR invoice. For the patient um anybody we've branded a ton of these for pharmacies around the country anyone who buys the acula machine from us will we custom brand this invoice for your pharmacy because you need your logo on it you need your medical director your clia your tax id and you need a ton of very specific verbiage and we've updated this over the number of months um, to be more compliant with different countries This is the antibody test. Antibody test, we actually this one we actually let patients come in the pharmacy uh, as long as they're feeling well. Um, and it's a finger stick. So we do a finger stick test in the vaccine room and it takes 15 minutes. Um, and what makes it different? Uh, well, with a COVID antigen test, they might be sick, they might have COVID, so we make them stay outside and it's a nasal swab. But with this one, it shows past infection. So we make sure that they book the right test um, and we don't let any sick patients, potentially sick with COVID, come in the pharmacy. Um, but these patients, they, they would just want to see if they had COVID in the past. Um, and it's a finger stick and you actually have to use a pipette to draw a whole drop of blood and put it into a cassette. Um, so definitely if you're going to get these fast step tests, practice on yourself, practice on your staff, practice on your family before you have a patient come in because it's a little awkward. 
Uh, but now I could probably do it in my sleep. Um, but most pharmacists have probably not uh, drawn blood into a pipette and stuck it in a cassette before. So always learning. There you go. And this is the same thing, the antibody stuff that gets zapped in. And then and you give... provide this as well on your um, on the Atrium 24. Yeah. Store there. Yeah. Yep. And then the invoice is the next one for the patients with the ICD-10 codes and CPTs for that. Um, and we have just a little bit of time left. I wanted to touch on, um, oh, this is important. Um, this is one of my pet peeves if anybody tries to break the PPE protocol. Uh, we do our testing in a separate area, in a separate room from the pharmacy area, because my team, like a lot of your teams, uh, were very nervous about our pharmacy starting COVID testing. They didn't want to get exposed and they didn't want to get sick. So it's in a separate room, actually. Um, so however you have to do in your pharmacy to separate it, even if you want to use screens or something. And then uh, that's just a photo of our gear. We have a gown, a hairnet, an N95 mask, a face shield and gloves. We treat it uh, surgically. Like once we put the gloves on, our hands are clean and we're touching the cassettes and everything. We're going outside, we're opening the door with our back and we're propping the door open with our foot um, on the doorstop. And then we're swabbing the patient's nose. We're putting it in the test tube and then we're bringing it back into the pharmacy, but we don't touch the door. We leave it open on the doorstop. We'll get it later. We go straight back in the COVID room. We do what we have to do, whether we're putting it in a machine or putting it on the, the table, on the patient's paperwork, where it goes in the plastic sleeve. And then we take the nasal swab and we put it into, I have it written down there, biohazard, into a lidded trash can. So we open that with our foot. We put the nasal swab in a biohazard bag in a lidded trash can. Because remember, some of these nasal swabs might be positive, but we don't know yet because we didn't run the test. So that freaked me out, just having a nasal swab just like thrown in a an open biohazard. It might be COVID positive. Um, uh, the, and then we have a big Sharps box that we keep in the COVID testing room. And we contract directly with Sharps, the company. And they come out to our pharmacy twice a month to come pick up all of our biohazard. Actually, I got a visit from someone in the health department of Florida that said that now we are a generator of biomedical waste. And we had, I had to pay like $75 for some biomedical waste permit. I was mad about that, but I did it. Um, and then we have these small biohazard bags that once we read the cassette and we see the cassette is positive, we put the cassette in a biohazard bag, even though it just has a little bit of liquid in it, but still it's COVID liquid, right? And we put that in the biohazard box. And anytime we get a positive, we take off all of our PPE and we put it in that biohazard box. We're done with it. So we go through a lot of gowns, a ton of gloves, of course, a lot of hair nets, a lot of face shields, a lot of N95 masks. But we started testing, I don't remember, I think like June or July of 2020. And I didn't get the vaccine until um, January, February of 2021 myself. And I never got COVID. And I tested thousands of patients. So you have so your to process was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I could be the guinea pig myself, but it's That's awesome. Yeah, you can't you can't go around getting COVID. And this these people are sick. They have other stuff too. They have other funk going on. So you can't get that either. Um, because you got to keep testing patients and staying out there. Um, and any of our exposures that our staff had, I believe it was from like their spouses and their spouses work because the timelines made sense, but you can never be too careful. So I wanted to give you a sneak peek really quick on the monoclonal antibodies. Uh, we have an e-course coming out soon because we've already learned a lot in this. Um, the next slide is an example of our intake form. So when we received the Regen Cove, the monoclonal antibodies, uh, you know, the, the treatment for patients who are um, over 88 pounds, 12 and older, they've either tested positive for COVID or they are high risk and have been exposed they can receive the monoclonal antibody treatment. Um, and Regencove is an injection. We just got vials of it shipped to us. I mean, I had to jump through a ton of hoops and apply through HHS, apply through the state of Florida, apply through Amerisource Bergen, because they're the ones distributing it. So we're putting together a step-by-step -step process in our e-course on how to apply, how to become a site. But when you receive them, you're just gonna get the vials, like sent to you via UPS or something. 
So uh, we contacted the State Board of Florida, we contacted everybody, and no one has an intake form or an intake process for the patient. No one has any paperwork. It's like, here's these vials, give them to the patients. Really? So we created a whole intake form. We'll have that as part of the e-course. Um, and the next slide, this is just an image of Regen Cove. So that's what we got. And you actually have to give a patient four injections, and each injection is 2.5 ml. So you're injecting 10 ml into a patient. And for perspective, if you got a Pfizer COVID vaccine, for example, that is 0.3 ml. So this is 2.5 ml, four of them. It's an insane amount of liquid to inject is it, into a patient. Is it all done in the same day? Same time, yeah. So Arm, legs. It's, it's subcutaneous. So mm -hmm. you'll have four syringes. Um, you'll do probably two in the stomach near the belly button. And then you'll do one in the back of each arm. Ouch. Yeah, and it's a lot of liquid. So, and it's a little viscous too. So it takes some time to push that plunger on that two and a half ml. Wow. Yeah. I'll stick awesome. to the counting and tax right there. <laughs> yeah, right. And so we we actually uh our process for the Regen Cove is we have the patients book online, it generates all their paperwork, and then we have them pull into our third drive-through bay that we don't use. And they park out there and then our pharmacist creates a whole tray and we actually created a little like um, a little treat bag for the patient too because we have to monitor them for one hour after the injection so we we bring them out like water and a protein bar and some little candies because these patients aren't feeling well and they just got a series of big injections so we don't want them passing out um, just because they didn't eat or they don't feel well um, so we give them the injections. We watch them for a little bit right next to them. Most people have someone else in the car with them, which is good. Um, but our pharmacist comes back in the pharmacy and someone from my staff watches the patient through the drive-through because you have to monitor them for an hour. We've heard of some pharmacies using that hour to, um, you know, see, see about bringing in a new patient or getting them some additional uh, products or supplements or whatever, using that as an opportunity to um, yeah to to add some some revenue in there. And um, I imagine also, Nicolette, you've seen quite a bit of uptick in um, patients overall with having these people come to your store for COVID testing that maybe yeah. would have gone to a Walgreens or a CVS. We have, and the thing we're struggling with right now is I can't get on Google as a monoclonal antibody testing center, and I can't get on the Florida Department of Health's locator as an MAB facility. So we're trying to crack that code. That's frustrating. So we've just been telling everybody on social media that we have it. Um, COVID vaccines. I just have two slides for you here. Um, the next one we made this is the cheat sheet. Um, and if you're in our portal and if you want to email us, we can send this to you. But remember I said color coding. We have color coded forms and color coded baskets. So when a patient checks in and they're getting a Pfizer vaccine, the form that we give them is highlighted in yellow. If they're getting a J&J &J vaccine, the form that we give them is highlighted in green. The basket that their paperwork goes into is yellow or is green. The vaccine, the syringe that the pharmacist pulls up, goes into a little yellow basket or a green basket. So the color coding is the same across the system because it, there's a lot going on. There's Pfizer shots, J&J &J shots, Moderna shots. Uh, a flurry is our flu shot. We're doing a lot of shingles shots now. We're doing some tetanus shots. We're doing some pneumonia shots. We're, we have some Regen Cove monoclonal antibody shots. So we, we keep everything in the proper uh, color coding. And then this cheat sheet, we keep it by our, by our vaccine center because the the amount to draw is different. See, Pfizer's 0 0.3 ml, the rest are 0 0.5. Pfizer, you have to take it out of the fridge for 30 minutes before you reconstitute it. Um, Moderna, you have to bring it to room temperature for 15 minutes, but you don't have to reconstitute and dilute. Um, there are different colors, so you need to make sure the, the color is correct uh, in the vial. Um, and then how long you've punctured that or how many times you can puncture it, so that's all there too. So. This cheat sheet was just something that that we felt like we needed to make um, just for all the checks and balances. And of course, when we sit down with the patient in the consult room, we ask them, which vaccine are they getting? Uh, because things happen. And this, um, 
I actually just got this from APHA and I really like it. It's kind of an algorithm for, um, you know, how old is the patient? Did they finish their primary series? Which vaccine did they get? And then what do you do about a booster? Because we all know that the Moderna booster is 0.25 ml instead of the original 0.5 ml. But if they're an immunocompromised patient, they should get the two Moderna and then they should get a third Moderna 28 days after the second, and that's actually a 0.5 ml additional dose. Then after that, six months later, they get a booster dose that's 0.25 ml. So some patients need four shots, wow. which is really confusing. <laughs> There's a lot of use cases. Um, and supplements, uh, we can send you guys this supplement sheet. Um, it's modified from some sources online, but for prevention, we tell patients to take pretty much those five supplements. If they tested positive, they just take much higher doses and we'll also sell them a pulse ox so they can just see, you know, monitor their, their, their pulse oxygenation at home. And that's more important than a thermometer if you've got COVID. It really is a, a great tool. I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're pushing that. Yeah, and especially in the middle of the night, things are a lot scarier. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So they can check their pulse ox at night. They can see like at least if their pulse ox is still really high, they're okay. Um, and then reviews. Uh, this is an example. So I just Googled today pharmacy near me and CVS comes up first. They're an ad, Four Corners. I don't think they're real. That's an ad, CVS, but then Palm Harbor Pharmacy. So if you look at the map, that's just a little snippet. We're saturated with pharmacies around here, like really saturated. Um, yeah, but our pharmacy... Lot. Yeah, our pharmacy shows up really strong and you can see we are a COVID vaccine location, we're a COVID testing center. All that is managed through Google Google My Business. So it's an app that you have to have, it's an account that you have to have, it's called Google My Business. And just like if you're posting to social media, you need to be posting to GMB frequently as well. You need to be answering questions in GMB, you need to be setting your yourself up because for SEO purposes, when people search you, this is how you'll come up. Um, the reviews, so we use something called Nice Job, and we pay $75 a month, and our auto text and auto emails an hour after every appointment humbly asks the patient to leave a review. And so um, that's how we've gotten over 700 five-star reviews. Uh, nice Job automatically posts them on our website, on our reviews page. It makes a pop-up come up on our website, it posts every good review to our Facebook page. Um, and so, yeah, as of today, 722 reviews. Wow. Um, that's is, awesome because people yeah. people look at reviews, that's for sure. Yeah. So when we talk about up solutions and patient conversion and even just being Googleable and having good SEO, reviews really help because those patients are typing in those keywords. Yeah. Um, fast, quick, convenient, professional. So, uh, like I said, we could talk forever on this, um, but if you register your pharmacy at app.atrium24.net, we can send you the freebie supplement sheet. We'll send you more information as we push it out on the monoclonal antibodies um, and anything that we talked about today and more, if we can help you, just let us know. We also do an ARX assessment service Sykes and Company does here, and if you have uh... Any needs for having a really a check under the hood situation of your pharmacy accounting and tax records or situation, we'll be happy to do that. Uh, just go to sites-cpa.com and you'll see at the very top of the homepage there, ARCS Assessment Service. Uh, that is a one one um, one service fee there of fifteen hundred dollars or fourteen ninety five rather, and uh, we line you up on a video call and go through your accounting and tax situation and give you a roadmap of the things we think you need to work on. Uh, going forward. Um, obviously, everything here today was educational, um, and so speak, please speak with your advisors, and we want to thank Nicolette today. Got some uh, great interaction, and, and um, appreciate your expertise, Nicolette, and um, glad to have you today. Great job. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. We work with Sykes in uh, both my companies, and I wouldn't trust anyone else <laughs> with all that information and guidance, especially with how frequently things are changing nowadays.
Well, we certainly uh, appreciate the opportunity to help you, Nicolette. And um, again, great job today. If you got any questions, reach out to us and we'll be pushing out this recording. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.